innocuous innocuous the word innocuous is an adjective that describes something that is not harmful or offensive it can refer to something that doesn't cause injury or is unlikely to provoke a strong response or reaction examples the comment was meant to be innocuous but it upset her the medicine is innocuous when taken as prescribed many see it as just an innocuous insect but i'm still scared of it the letter contained mostly innocuous information with no surprising revelations in these examples innocuous conveys a sense of harmlessness or lack of threat haran haran the word haran can be used both as a noun and a verb noun a haran is a lengthy and aggressive speech or lecture it's often characterized by strong emotion forceful criticism or impassioned persuasion verb to haran means to deliver a long passionate and forceful speech often in a lecturing or aggressive manner to someone examples the politicians harang about the evils of corruption lasted for over an hour the teacher harang the students about the importance of punctuality after most arrived late audience members were taken aback by the unexpected harang on morality the captain harang his team after their poor performance in the first half of the game in essence harang suggests a tone that is forceful often to the point of being confrontational or overbearing gregarious gregarious the word gregarious is an adjective that primarily describes someone who is sociable outgoing and enjoys being in groups or gatherings it can refer to individuals who prefer the company of others rather than being alone in a broader context gregarious can also be used in biology to describe animals that live in groups or herds examples Jane is a gregarious individual who thrives in social situations and loves attending parties. Unlike his reserved brother, Mike is gregarious and always surrounded by friends. Some bird species are known for their gregarious nature, often seen flying in large flocks. Elephants are gregarious animals, often found in close-knit family groups. In these examples, gregarious emphasizes sociability, communal behavior, or a preference for group interaction castigate castigate the verb castigate means to criticize or reprimand someone severely it often implies a harsh scolding rebuke or correction usually because of wrongdoing or perceived faults after the team lost the match due to a careless mistake the coach castigated the players for their lack of focus The teacher castigated the student for plagiarizing his research paper. Critics were quick to castigate the film for its lack of originality. The manager castigated the staff for not meeting the project's deadlines. Environmentalists castigated the company for polluting the river and not taking adequate preventive measures. In each of these examples, the word castigate conveys a sense of strong disapproval or severe criticism. betray betray the word betray is a verb that primarily means to be disloyal or unfaithful to someone by acting in a way that goes against their trust or confidence here are various ways betray can be defined and used to deliver into the hands of an enemy this is a more literal and historic usage where someone might betray another by handing them over to their enemy often in the context of war or conflict example judas iscariot is said to have betrayed jesus to the chief priests to be disloyal or unfaithful this is perhaps the most common usage where someone breaks the trust of another example he felt betrayed by his friends actions to disclose in violation of confidence this is about revealing secrets or confidential information example she betrayed her company's secrets to a competitor to show or indicate without intention this can refer to revealing something about oneself unintentionally example his trembling hands betrayed his nervousness auspicious auspicious the word auspicious is an adjective that describes something that suggests that future success is likely 
it is often used to indicate favorable conditions or good omens. In simpler terms, if something is described as auspicious, it means it's a positive sign or is likely to lead to a favorable outcome. Examples in sentences The team viewed the sunny weather on the day of the big game as an auspicious sign. They began their journey on an auspicious date, hoping for success. The CEO believed the company's strong start in the first quarter was an auspicious indication of the year to come. The word is often used in contrast to inauspicious, which indicates an unfavorable sign or omen. Amorphous Amorphous The term amorphous originates from the Greek words a, meaning without, and morph, meaning form or shape. In its most basic definition, amorphous refers to something that lacks a defined shape or clear structure. Here is a deeper look. Physical sciences, in the context of material science and physics, amorphous describes substances that do not have a well-defined crystalline structure. Unlike crystalline materials, where atoms or molecules are organized in a repeating pattern, amorphous materials do not exhibit long-range order at the atomic or molecular level. General usage, outside of the sciences, Amorphous can be used more broadly to describe anything that lacks a clear structure or definition. For instance, one might say, the committee's objectives were amorphous, meaning they were vague or ill-defined. In essence, whether you're speaking about materials or metaphors, amorphous denotes a lack of clear form or structure. Quorum Quorum A quorum refers to the minimum number of members of a committee, legislative body, or other group that must be present for the valid transaction of business. Essentially, it's the least number of members who must be in attendance for decisions to be made legally or for proceedings to go forward. The specific number or percentage that constitutes a quorum often depends on the rules of the particular organization or governing body. For example, in many legislative assemblies, a quorum might be more than half of the total members. In a practical context, if there is no quorum, the group might not be able to make any official decisions or conduct business until the required number of members is present. Quisling Quisling The term Quisling is derived from Vidkun Quisling, who was a Norwegian army officer and politician. He collaborated with the Nazis during World War II and established a puppet government in Norway while it was under German occupation. As a result of his betrayal to his country, his name became synonymous with traitor or collaborator. Thus, in modern usage, a quisling refers to someone who collaborates with the enemy or betrays their own country or group. It's a derogatory term that strongly conveys treachery and betrayal. For example, one might say, the rebel leader was seen as a quisling because of his secret dealings with the enemy. Quiescent Quiescent The word quiescent means being in a state of inactivity, calm, or quietude. It's used to describe something or someone that is currently inactive or at rest but has the potential to become active. For example, though the baby is usually active, she was quiescent after her bottle of milk. After the earthquake, the volcano remained quiescent for several years before erupting again. Quietude Quietude The word quietude refers to a state of stillness, calmness, and quiet in a person or place. It's a condition or quality of being free from noise, disturbance, or tumult. The term often suggests a peaceful and tranquil state of mind or environment. Here are some examples using the word quietude. After the hustle and bustle of the city, she longed for the quietude of the countryside. The library was a place of quietude, where one could concentrate on reading or studying without distractions. Meditation often helps individuals find a moment of quietude amidst their hectic lives. The old monastery, perched on a hill, was a heaven of quietude, far removed from the concerns of the modern world. Quiescent Quiescent The word quiescent means being in a state of inactivity, calm, or quietude. 
It's used to describe something or someone that is currently inactive or at rest but has the potential to become active. For example, though the baby is usually active, she was quiescent after her bottle of milk. After the earthquake, the volcano remained quiescent for several years before erupting again. Queasy means feeling nauseated or sick to the stomach, often with the urge to vomit. It can also describe a general feeling of discomfort or unease. For instance, someone might feel queasy after a bumpy car ride or after seeing something unsettling. Example, after riding the roller coaster multiple times, Lisa felt queasy and decided to sit down for a while. Quarantine Quarantine The word quarantine refers to Isolation or restriction it's a period during which an individual, animal, or item that might be carrying a contagious disease is kept away from others to prevent the disease from spreading. This can be at home, in a facility, or at a border, for imported goods. Origin of the word, historically, the term quarantine comes from the Italian word quaranta, meaning 40, referencing the 40 days during which ships were required to be isolated before passengers, and crew could go ashore during the Black Death Plague epidemics. Modern usage, in the context of global health events, like the COVID-19 pandemic, quarantine became a widely used term to describe the practice of isolating individuals who might have been exposed to the virus to prevent its spread. Simply put, quarantine is a protective measure to keep possible diseases away from healthy populations. Quagmire Quagmire the word quagmire has multiple meanings. Literally, a soft, boggy area of land that gives way underfoot. It's similar to a swamp or mire and can be treacherous to navigate because of its wet and sinking nature. Figuratively, the term is often used metaphorically to describe a complex, hazardous situation that is difficult to escape from. Imagine trying to solve a problem but every step you take makes the problem more complicated. For example, a protracted war or conflict that seems impossible to resolve could be referred to as a quagmire. Similarly, any situation where progress is difficult due to complexities or complications can be labeled as such. The word can be used in various contexts to convey the sense of being stuck or mired in a difficult or troublesome situation. For example, he found himself in a quagmire of legal troubles. Repudiate Repudiate The word repudiate is a verb that means to reject, disown, or deny the validity or authority of something. Here are some contexts in which the term might be used. Refusal to accept, to reject or refuse to accept or be associated with. Example she repudiated the extremist views of the group she once belonged to. Denial, to deny the truth or validity of. Example, the politician repudiated the allegations of misconduct. Financial obligation, in a financial context, it can mean to refuse to fulfill or discharge an agreement, debt, or liability. Example, the company repudiated its contract with the supplier. In essence, when someone repudiates something, they are formally distancing themselves from it or denying it in some way. Reprobate Reprobate The word reprobate is a term that can be used as both a noun and an adjective, and it generally refers to a person who is morally unprincipled or depraved. Noun A reprobate is a person who behaves in a morally reprehensible or wicked manner. Example, some viewed him as a reprobate due to his numerous unethical dealings. Adjective, describing someone or something as being beyond hope or redemption, morally depraved, or unprincipled. Example, his reprobate behavior led to his isolation from the community. Historically, especially in theological contexts, reprobate referred to a person predestined to damnation. Over time, its usage broadened to refer more generally to individuals who are seen as morally corrupt or wicked. Reproach Reproach The word reproach can be used as both a noun and a verb, 
and it generally refers to an expression of disapproval or disappointment. Noun, reproach is an expression of rebuke or disapproval. Example, his actions brought reproach upon the entire team. Verb, to reproach means to address someone in such a way as to express disapproval or disappointment. Example, she reproached him for coming home late. In essence, when someone is reproached, they are being criticized or blamed, often because they have failed to meet certain expectations or standards. Reprive Reprive The word Reprive can be used as both a noun and a verb, and it generally refers to a temporary relief or delay in the execution of a punishment, especially a death sentence. Here is the meaning in both contexts. Noun a reprieve is a temporary suspension of the execution of a sentence, especially a death sentence, for a certain period. It's a delay or postponement, usually for a specific reason. Example, the governor granted him a reprieve two hours before the scheduled execution. Verb, to reprieve means to grant a delay or temporary relief to someone. Example, the student was reprieved from taking the exam due to her illness. In a broader sense, reprieve can also refer to any temporary relief from something unpleasant or difficult. Example, after days of rain, the sunny day was a welcome reprieve for the residents. Replica Replica The word replica is a noun that refers to a copy or reproduction of a work of art, especially one made by the original artist. It can also refer to any close or exact copy or reproduction of something. Here are some contexts in which the term might be used. Art, a replica of a famous painting might be displayed in a museum when the original is too fragile to be shown. Fashion, some people buy replica designer handbags that look like the real thing but are much cheaper. Automobiles, some car enthusiasts build replica cars that look like classic or rare vehicles. Historical artifacts, replicas of historical artifacts might be made for educational purposes or for display in museums where the original is too valuable or delicate. Architecture, sometimes, buildings or structures are replicated for various reasons, such as for theme parks or historical recreations. It's worth noting that the term replica often implies a high degree of fidelity to the original, but the quality and accuracy can vary. Repertoire Repertoire The word repertoire means a stock of plays, dances, or pieces that a company or a performer knows or is prepared to perform. Example, the theater group added several classic plays to their repertoire. The range or number of skills, aptitudes, or special accomplishments of a particular person or group. Example, the chef's repertoire includes dishes from various cuisines around the world. A set of items, such as songs, that a performer is prepared to present. Example, the singer's repertoire consisted of both contemporary hits and old classics. In general, repertoire refers to a collection or range of works, skills, or performances that someone is familiar with or can present. Repercussion Repercussion The word repercussion means a consequence or result, often indirect or remote, of some event or action. Example The economic repercussions of the pandemic affected businesses and individuals worldwide. Repercussions can be either positive or negative, but the term is often used in the context of undesirable outcomes or consequences that follow a particular event, decision, or action. Repati Repati The word repati means quick, witty conversation or reply. Example, their playful repati kept the entire dinner table entertained. The ability to make such remarks in a sharp, witty manner. Example, she was known for her sharp repartee and could always come up with a clever comeback. Repartee often involves exchanges that are both amusing and quick with reprable. Reprable. The word reprable mean capable of being repaired, mended, or remedied, fixable. Example. 
The damage to the car was significant but still repairable with the right tools and expertise. When something is described as repairable, it means that it can be restored to its original state or condition, or that the harm or damage done can be rectified or corrected. Remorse Remorse The word remorse means a deep and painful regret for wrongdoing, a feeling of guilt or moral scruple that prevents or follows wrongdoing. Example After realizing the pain he had caused, he felt a profound sense of remorse and sought to make amends. Remorse often involves a strong emotional response, including feelings of guilt, shame, and sorrow for one's actions or decisions that have harmed others or oneself. It's more than just regret. It's a deeper emotional experience that often motivates individuals to seek forgiveness or make amends. Remediable Remediable The word remediable means capable of being corrected, improved, or rectified, able to be remedied or cured. Example The environmental damage was severe but still remediable with concerted conservation efforts. When something is described as remediable, it means that there are measures or solutions available to address, fix, or heal it. Relegate Relegate The word relegate means to consign or dismiss to an inferior rank or position. Example, after the mistake, he was relegated to a lesser role in the project. In the context of sports, to demote, a team, to a lower division or league due to poor performance. Example, the team finished last in the league and was relegated to the second division. To assign or refer, a matter or task, to another person or group for decision or action. Example, the manager relegated the task of sorting the files to the intern. The term relegate implies a downward shift in position, status, or responsibility. Retreat. Retreat. The word retreat is a verb. To say or do something again or repeatedly, often for emphasis or clarity. Example. She reiterated her warning to the group, reminding them of the potential dangers ahead. The term retreat often implies that something is being restated to ensure understanding, to emphasize its importance, or to address it in a different way. Regnant. Regnant. The term regnant is derived from the Latin word regnans, which means reigning. It can refer to a ruler who is currently in power, or to a dominant trend or influence in a particular field or era. Currently reigning, especially used to describe a monarch who is on the throne. Example, Queen Elizabeth II is the regnant monarch of the United Kingdom. Predominant having widespread existence, influence, or acceptance. Example, during the Renaissance, humanistic values were regnant in the world of art and literature. Regime Regime A system or planned way of doing things, especially one imposed from above. This can refer to a particular government or a system or method of government. Example the old regime was characterized by censorship and a lack of political freedoms. A government, especially an authoritarian one. Example The military regime took control of the country after a coup. A regular pattern or a set of conditions of behavior or occurrence. Example The new health regime helped him lose weight and feel more energetic. The term regime can be used in various contexts, from politics to medicine, to describe a systematic way of operating or a set of rules to follow. Regatta Regatta A regatta is a series of boat races. The term typically describes racing events of road or sailed watercraft, although some powerboat race series are also called regattas. Regattas are often held on lakes, rivers, or the open sea and can vary in distance and the type of boats involved. They can be amateur or professional events, and they often serve as both sporting competitions and social gatherings. Example The annual sailing regatta attracted teams from all over the country, 
and the shoreline was filled with spectators eager to watch the exciting races. Refraction Refraction The word refraction, noun refraction refers to the change in direction of a wave passing from one medium to another caused by its change in speed. This phenomenon is most commonly observed with light waves, but it can also apply to other types of waves like sound waves. For instance, when light travels from air into water, it slows down and bends, causing objects underwater to appear shifted from their actual position. This bending of light is due to refraction. The amount by which light bends depends on the angle at which it enters a new medium and the refractive indices of the two media. A common example of refraction is a straw appearing bent when it is placed in a glass of water. The portion of the straw in the water appears to be at a different location than the portion above the water due to the bending of light as it moves from the water to the air. Refectory Refectory The word refectory, noun a dining room, especially in monasteries, boarding schools, and academic institutions, where meals are served in a communal setting. Example In the ancient monastery, Monks would gather in the refectory every evening to share a simple meal in silence, while one of them read aloud from a sacred text. Redoubtable Redoubtable The word redoubtable is an adjective that describes someone or something that is inspiring fear or respect through being impressively powerful, large, or capable. Example, the general was a redoubtable figure, known for his tactical genius and leadership on the battlefield. In essence, redoubtable can be used to describe someone who is both formidable and worthy of respect. Rectitude Rectitude The word rectitude is a noun that refers to morally correct behavior or thinking, righteousness. It implies a straightness or uprightness in character and action. Example, the judge was known for his rectitude and fair decisions, making him respected by both his peers and the public. In essence, rectitude describes a quality of being honest and morally correct. Recondite Recondite The word recondite is an adjective that describes something that is little known or difficult for the average person to understand due to its complexity or obscurity. It often refers to knowledge or subjects that are profound, deep, or abstract. Example The lecture on advanced quantum mechanics delved into recondite topics that went over the heads of many attendees. In essence, recondite is used to describe subjects or matters that are deep, abstruse, or esoteric. Recidivism Recidivism The word recidivism is a noun that refers to the tendency of a convicted criminal to reoffend or revert to criminal behavior after having been punished or rehabilitated. It's often used in discussions about the effectiveness of rehabilitation programs, prison systems, and other correctional measures. Example, high rates of recidivism indicate that the prison system is not effective in rehabilitating offenders and preventing them from returning to criminal activities. In essence, recidivism measures the rate at which individuals return to criminal behavior after having been previously involved with the criminal justice system. Recalcitrant Recalcitrant The word recalcitrant is an adjective that describes someone who is stubbornly resistant to authority, control, or guidance. It can refer to a person who refuses to obey rules or follow orders, or more broadly, to anything that is hard to manage or deal with. Example, the recalcitrant student refused to complete his assignments despite repeated warnings from his teacher. In essence, recalcitrant is used to describe someone or something that is uncooperative or defiant. Rebuttal Rebuttal The word rebuttal is a noun that refers to a refutation or contradiction. It's an argument, statement, or evidence that counters or opposes another claim or argument. Example, in the debate, she presented a strong rebuttal to her opponent's claims, providing evidence that disproved his points. So, a rebuttal is essentially a counterargument or a response aimed at disproving or countering someone else's argument. Realm 
realm the word realm is a noun that refers to a kingdom a territory or a domain ruled by a king or queen example the entire realm mourned the death of the beloved queen a field or domain of activity or interest an area of knowledge or expertise example the concept of quantum mechanics belongs to the realm of advanced physics a region or domain within which anything occurs prevails or dominates example the decision was out of the realm of possibilities given our current budget so in essence realm can refer to a physical territory a sphere of activity or knowledge or a domain where specific conditions or rules apply ravenous ravenous the word ravenous is an adjective that describes an intense hunger or an extreme appetite for food it can also be used more broadly to indicate a voracious or insatiable desire for something example after the long hike she was ravenous and ate everything on her plate in minutes raucous raucous the word raucous is an adjective used to describe a loud and noisy disturbance or a sound that is harsh and rough it often implies boisterousness or unruly behavior example the party next door became so raucous that the neighbors called the police to complain about the noise raspy raspy the word raspy is an adjective that describes a voice or sound that is harsh grating or rough it's often used to refer to voices that sound scratchy like someone might have after shouting for a long time or from a sore throat example after cheering for her team all night her voice was raspy and strained the next day rapacious rapacious the word rapacious is an adjective that describes someone or something that is extremely greedy or grasping especially for wealth or possessions it can also imply an aggressive predatory nature example the rapacious landlord raised the rent every few months causing many long term residents to move out ramshackle ramshackle the word ramshackle is an adjective used to describe something especially a building or vehicle that is in a state of severe disrepair or is close to collapse example the old barn with its broken windows and missing boards looked so ramshackle that i feared it might fall over any day ramification ramification the word ramification is a noun that has a couple of related meanings a consequence or result often one that is complex or unwelcome for the meaning related to consequences or outcomes let's have an example skipping meals can have several ramifications including fatigue and poor concentration another example the decision to raise the price of the product had the unexpected ramification of increasing sales as customers perceived it as more valuable for the meaning related to branching out let's have an example the reverse ramification created a beautiful delta where many smaller streams flowed into the sea another example example the internet's ramification into various platforms and websites has made it an indispensable tool for modern society raconter raconter the word raconter is a noun that refers to a person who is skilled in relating stories and anecdotes interestingly it's derived from the french word raconter which means to tell example at parties jake was always surrounded by a group of captivated listeners as he was an engaging raconter with tales from his travels around the world rendition rendition the word rendition means a performance or interpretation especially of a dramatic role or piece of music example her rendition of the national anthem was both powerful and moving the act of rendering something into another language or form example the poet's works underwent a rendition into english from the original french the practice of sending a foreign criminal or terrorist suspect covertly to be interrogated in a country with less rigorous regulations for the humane treatment of prisoners often associated with allegations of torture or inhumane treatment 
example, there was controversy surrounding the alleged rendition of suspects to countries known for using torture. The term rendition can be used in various contexts, from arts and culture to legal and political scenarios, and its meaning varies based on the context in which it's used. Promulgate Promulgate The word promulgate is a verb that means to make widely known, promote, or publicize, especially in the context of formally proclaiming or declaring new statutes, decrees, or doctrines. It can be used in various contexts. Legal Referring to the formal proclamation or declaration that a new statutory or administrative law is enacted and will be enforced. Example, the government promulgated a new law regarding environmental protections. Religious, referring to the proclamation or declaration of a doctrine or dogma. Example, the church council met to promulgate its stance on the recent theological debates. General use, to publicly announce, make widely known, or spread an idea or principle. Example, the organization seeks to promulgate the importance of mental health awareness. In essence, promulgate is about announcing, proclaiming, or spreading information, ideas, or laws, often with an official or authoritative tone. Prologue Prologue the word prologue is a separate introductory section that comes before the main body of a work, especially in literature, drama, or long-form narratives. It serves several purposes. Setting the scene, a prologue can establish the setting or provide background details. Introducing characters, it might give readers or audiences a glimpse of key characters or their histories. Presenting key themes or conflicts. A prologue can hint at central themes or conflicts that will emerge in the story. Creating suspense or interest By providing a dramatic incident or posing a question, a prologue can hook readers or viewers and encourage them to continue with the main story. For example, in some Shakespeare plays, a character comes out and delivers a prologue before the action begins, as in Romeo and Juliet. It's worth noting that while a prologue comes at the beginning of a work, there is also an epilogue, which is a section or speech at the end of a book or play that serves as a comment on or a conclusion to what has happened. Proliferation Proliferation The word proliferation is a noun that refers to a rapid increase or multiplication of something, especially the number or amount. It can be used in various contexts ranging from biological to technological to political. Examples Cell biology, the process by which cells multiply and divide. The proliferation of cancer cells can lead to the formation of tumors. Nuclear weapons, the spread or rapid increase in the number of nuclear weapons. International treaties aim to prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons. General use, describing any rapid increase or spread. With the rise of smartphones, there has been a proliferation of mobile apps in the market. In essence, proliferation conveys the idea of something spreading or increasing in number, often at a fast pace. Proletarian Proletarian The word proletarian is a noun or adjective derived from the word proletariat. It primarily relates to the working class, especially those who lack capital and do not own means of production. Historically and in Marxist theory, the proletariat is contrasted with the bourgeoisie, the capitalist class who owns the means of production. As a noun, proletarian refers to a member of the working class. Example, the revolution was led by the proletarians against the ruling elites. As an adjective, Proletarian describes something as belonging to or characteristic of the working class. Example, proletarian literature focuses on the lives and struggles of working class people. In broader contexts, proletarian can be used to describe anyone who belongs to the lower or working classes of society. Progenitor Progenitor The word progenitor is a noun that refers to a person or thing from which a person animal, or plant is descended or originates, 
an ancestor or parent. It can also indicate a person who originates an artistic, political, or intellectual movement, or someone who is a precursor or foreigner to a particular trend, idea, or movement. For example, the ancient Greeks are often seen as the progenitors of Western philosophy. The wolf is considered a progenitor of the domestic dog. As a pioneering scientist in the field, she is viewed as the progenitor of many modern techniques used in the lab. In essence, progenitor denotes a source or origin, often in terms of lineage or foundational ideas. Progenitor Progenitor The word progenitor is a noun that refers to a person or thing from which a person, animal, or plant is descended or originates, an ancestor or parent. It can also indicate a person who originates an artistic, political, or intellectual movement, or someone who is a precursor or foreigner to a particular trend, idea, or movement. For example, the ancient Greeks are often seen as the progenitors of Western philosophy. The wolf is considered a progenitor of the domestic dog. As a pioneering scientist in the field, she is viewed as the progenitor of many modern techniques used in the lab. In essence, progenitor denotes a source or origin, often in terms of lineage or foundational ideas. Profound Profound The word profound is an adjective that describes something as being very great or intense. It often refers to a state, quality, or emotion that is deeply and thoroughly felt or experienced. Profound can be used in various contexts. Depth of knowledge or thought, indicating deep insight or understanding. Example, she has a profound understanding of the subject matter. Emotional depth, referring to intense feelings or emotions. Example, he felt a profound sadness after hearing the news. Significant or far-reaching impact, indicating a major effect or influence. Example, the invention of the internet has had a profound impact on society. Physical depth, sometimes used to describe something that is literally deep. Example, the ocean's profound depths remain largely unexplored. In essence, profound conveys a sense of depth, intensity, or thoroughness, whether in terms of emotions, knowledge, impact, or even physical depth. Profligate Profligate. The word profligate can function as both a noun and an adjective, and it typically refers to recklessly extravagant or wasteful behavior, especially in the use of resources or money. As an adjective, describing someone who is wildly extravagant or wasteful. Example, his profligate spending left him in deep debt. As a noun, Referring to a person who is recklessly extravagant or wasteful, often one who leads a dissolute life. Example, the heir was a profligate, squandering the family's fortune on gambling and lavish parties. It's worth noting that profligate often carries a negative connotation, suggesting not just excess, but careless and irresponsible excess. Prodigies Prodigies the word prodigious is an adjective that describes something as being impressively great in size, extent, or degree, extraordinary or remarkable. It can refer to both positive and negative qualities, depending on the context. For example, the author displayed a prodigious talent for storytelling at a young age. The construction of the pyramid was a prodigious feat of engineering. He has a prodigious appetite. He can eat more than anyone I know. The city faced a prodigious amount of debt after the economic downturn. In essence, prodigious emphasizes the notable magnitude or degree of something, whether it's talent, effort, size, or some other quality. Procrastinate Procrastinate The word procrastinate is a verb that means to delay or postpone action, to put off doing something. People who procrastinate tend to avoid completing tasks that they should be focusing on. This avoidance can be due to various reasons, such as fear of failure 
perfectionism, or simply the preference for doing something more enjoyable. For example, I know I should start on my project, but I tend to procrastinate and leave it until the last minute. Procrastinating on important decisions can lead to missed opportunities. She wanted to clean her room but kept procrastinating by watching TV shows. In essence, to procrastinate is to delay or defer action, often leading to increased stress or missed deadlines. Proclivity Proclivity The word proclivity is a noun that refers to a strong, natural inclination or predisposition towards something, particularly something habitually or objectionably so. It describes a tendency to choose or be drawn to something repeatedly. For example, he has a proclivity for adventure sports, always seeking the next adrenaline rush. Her proclivity for sweet treats makes dieting a challenge. Some individuals might have a proclivity to procrastinate when faced with challenging tasks. In essence, Proclivity describes a habitual or strong preference or inclination towards a particular activity, behavior, or choice. Pristine Pristine The word pristine is an adjective that describes something that is in its original condition, unspoiled or untouched by human influence. It can also refer to something that is clean and fresh as if new. Here are some contexts in which pristine can be used. Environment nature, referring to landscapes, habitats, or environments that are pure and have not been affected by pollution, development, or human activity. For instance, a pristine forest or pristine waters. Objects, pertaining to items that are kept in their original, clean condition without wear or damage. For instance, a pristine vintage car or a book in pristine condition. General use, referring to the purity or clarity of something. For instance, pristine sound quality or pristine reasoning. In essence, pristine conveys a sense of purity, freshness, or clarity, whether it relates to natural environments, objects, or abstract concepts. Primordial Primordial the word primordial is an adjective that relates to the earliest times or the earliest stages in the development of something. It can refer to things that are original, ancient, or fundamental. Here are some contexts in which primordial can be used. Astronomy physics, referring to the state of the universe shortly after the Big Bang. For instance, primordial gases or primordial fluctuations. Biology pertaining to the earliest stages of development, like primordial germ cells which are the precursors of sperm and egg cells. General use, referring to the very beginnings or ancient times. For instance, primordial civilizations or primordial landscapes. In essence, primordial conveys a sense of fundamental, original existence, often from times so ancient that they are hard to comprehend or visualize. Prevaricate Prevaricate The word prevaricate is a verb that means to speak or act in an evasive way in order to avoid telling the truth or making a direct statement. It's essentially a fancy way of saying that someone is avoiding giving a straightforward answer, often to deceive or mislead. For example, instead of giving a clear answer, he prevaricated, hoping to avoid the topic altogether. When asked about her involvement in the situation, she began to prevaricate, providing long-winded explanations without truly addressing the question. In essence, to prevaricate is to be deliberately ambiguous or unclear in order to mislead or withhold information. Primogeniture Primogeniture The word primogeniture is a noun that refers to the system or practice where the firstborn child, especially the eldest son, inherits the entire estate or significant rights, to the exclusion of younger siblings. This system has been used historically in various cultures and societies as a way to keep estates undivided and maintain the wealth and power of a family or lineage within one main branch. There are two main types of primogeniture. 
seniority primogeniture, where the eldest child inherits everything, commonly associated with the eldest son in many societies, but not exclusively. Male preference primogeniture, where male heirs are given preference over female heirs. In this system, a daughter would only inherit if she had no living brothers and no diseased brothers who left descendants. Many societies and legal systems have moved away from primogeniture as the standard practice, opting for more equal inheritance laws. However, it still plays a role in some traditions, cultures, and even in certain aristocratic or royal successions. Prescience Prescience The word prescience is a noun that refers to the ability to know or predict events before they take place. It's essentially a foreknowledge of what is going to happen. Derived from the Latin words pre, meaning before, and sire, meaning to know, prescience is often used to describe an almost uncanny ability to foresee the future. For example, his prescience in predicting market trends made him an invaluable asset to the company. The author's prescience in writing about social changes years before they occurred was remarkable. In literature and mythology, prescience is often an attribute of oracles, seers, and certain prophetic characters. In everyday usage, it can refer to an individual's exceptional foresight or intuition about future events. Premonition Premonition The word premonition is a noun that refers to a strong feeling or intuition about a future event, particularly an impending unfortunate or negative event. It's like a forewarning or foresight, but it's typically based on a vague, intuitive feeling rather than any clear evidence or logical reasoning. For example, she had a premonition that something bad was about to happen when she noticed the dark clouds gathering. Despite the clear skies, he had prefatory. Prefatory. The word prefatory is an adjective that relates to or serves as a preface or introduction. It describes something that comes before the main content, often setting the stage, providing context, or explaining the purpose of the subsequent material. For example, in a book, the prefatory remarks might include the author's intention behind writing the book, acknowledgments, or any other initial explanations or dedications that come before the main text. Preeminent 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 is an adjective that describes someone or something that is superior to or notable above all others, it means surpassing all others or being outstanding in a particular quality, role, or field. For example, the scientist is preeminent in her field of study, recognized globally for her groundbreaking research. The university has a preeminent reputation for its engineering programs. In essence, Preeminent conveys a sense of unrivaled excellence or prominence in a specific domain or context. Precise Precise The word precise is an adjective that describes something as being exact, accurate, and clear. It refers to the quality of being strictly defined, leaving no uncertainty, or being meticulous in detail. For example, the scientist made precise measurements to ensure the experiment's accuracy. Can you give a more precise description of the suspect? She is precise in her language, choosing her words carefully. In essence, precise conveys a sense of exactness or specificity, whether in terms of details, actions, or descriptions. Precies Precies The word precies, pronounced preci is a noun derived from the French word précise, which means to specify or to make clear. In English, a précise refers to a concise summary or abstract of a larger text or speech. The main objective of a précise is to present the essential points or ideas of the original content in a condensed form, capturing its main themes and arguments without personal interpretation or opinion. For example, after reading a lengthy article or report, one might be asked to write a precis to highlight the main findings or points of the document in a brief and clear manner. Predetermine 
predetermine the word predetermine is a verb that means to decide or establish something in advance it implies that an outcome action or decision has been set or fixed beforehand often before any of the events leading up to the outcome have taken place for example the results of the competition were not predetermined they were based on the actual performance of the participants some believe that fate predetermines our life course while others think we have free will in various contexts predetermine can be used to convey a sense of predestination planning or presetting of certain conditions or outcomes predilection predilection the word predilection is a noun that refers to a preference or special liking for something a bias in favor of something or a predisposition to choose a particular thing over others it can be thought of as a personal inclination or a tendency to be drawn to something often based on individual taste or disposition for example she has a predilection for classical music over other genres his predilection for spicy food always drives him to order the spiciest dish on the menu in essence predilection describes a fondness or preference for something often beyond mere precept precept the word precept is a noun that refers to a general rule or principle intended to regulate behavior or thought it can be understood as a guideline command or instruction that dictates a specific mode of conduct for example the precepts of many religions include guidelines for moral behavior the teacher's main precept was respect she expected every student to treat others as they would like to be treated in essence a precept is a foundational rule or principle that guides actions decisions or beliefs precedent precedent the word precedent is a noun that refers to an earlier event or action that is regarded as an example or guide to be considered in subsequent similar circumstances in legal contexts a precedent specifically refers to a previous case or legal decision that may be o binding precedent must be followed in subsequent similar cases for example The Supreme Court's decision set a precedent for future cases involving similar issues. There was no precedent for such a case, so the judge had to rely on his own judgment. In a broader context, precedent can be used to describe any situation or decision that serves as a model for how similar situations should be handled in the future. Precarious. Precarious. The word precarious is an adjective that describes something that is not securely held or in position and is dangerously likely to fall or collapse. It can also refer to something that is dependent on chance circumstances, unknown conditions or uncertain developments and therefore can be potentially unstable or risky. For example, standing on a rickety ladder is a precarious position. The financial health of the company is precarious due to declining sales and mounting debt. Their living situation was precarious as they weren't sure if they'd have a place to stay the following month. In these contexts, precarious conveys a sense of insecurity or instability about the situation or condition. pragmatic pragmatic the word pragmatic is an adjective that refers to dealing with things sensibly and realistically in a way that is based on practical rather than theoretical considerations a pragmatic approach focuses on the practical application of ideas by addressing problems in a way that produces practical and effective outcomes for example while an idealistic person might focus on what should be A pragmatic person would more likely focus on what is and what can be done given the current circumstances. In linguistics, pragmatics is a subfield that studies the ways in which context contributes to meaning or the study of the aspects of meaning and language used that are dependent on the speaker, the addressee, 
and other features of the context of utterance. Posture Posture The word posture primarily refers to the position in which someone holds their body when standing or sitting. It's the arrangement of the body and its limbs. Proper posture is important for various reasons, including maintaining good health, preventing muscle strain, and projecting confidence. Posture can also be used in a figurative sense to mean a particular way of dealing with or considering something, an approach or attitude. Physical posture. She has good posture while sitting at her desk, which helps her avoid back pain. Figurative posture. The country's posture on the international stage is increasingly assertive. Both the literal and figurative meanings convey the idea of positioning, either of the body or of a stance attitude. Polyglot Polyglot The word polyglot has two primary meanings. A person who knows and is able to use several languages. For instance, someone who speaks English, French, Spanish, and Chinese fluently could be described as a polyglot. Adjective referring to knowing or using several languages. For example, a book that's available in multiple languages can be called a polyglot edition. The word originates from the Greek polyvultos, where polu means many and gultos refers to tongue or language. Pognancy Pognancy the word poignancy is a noun that describes a quality that evokes a keen sense of sadness or regret. It refers to something that deeply touches our emotions, often in a bittersweet or deeply moving manner. For example, if a story or a movie scene is described as poignant, it means that it has a strong emotional impact, often stirring feelings of sorrow, sympathy, or melancholy. Similarly, recalling a memory that is both happy and sad can be described as poignant. Plethora Plethora The word plethora is a noun that refers to a large or excessive amount of something, an abundance or surplus. For example, one might say, there is a plethora of information available on this topic, meaning there is an abundance or more than enough information about it. The term can sometimes carry a connotation of being more than what is needed or excessive. Plenitude Plenitude The word plenitude is a noun that refers to an abundance of fullness, especially of goods or wealth. The condition of being full or complete. It can be used to describe a great quantity or the state of having plenty of something. For instance, the orchard bore fruit in plenitude suggests that the orchard was very fruitful and produced a large amount of fruit. Podiatrist Podiatrist A podiatrist is a medical professional specialized in diagnosing, treating, and preventing diseases, injuries, and conditions of the feet and lower extremities. They can address issues ranging from common foot problems like bunions and cones to more complex issues such as fractures, deformities, and complications from diseases like diabetes. In some regions or jurisdictions, a podiatrist may also be referred to as a chiropodist. Polemic Polemic The word polemic is a noun that refers to a strong verbal or written attack on someone or something. The art or practice of engaging in controversial debate or dispute. A polemic often involves a contentious or aggressive argument that aims to establish the superiority of one viewpoint over another, especially in matters of opinion, doctrine, or beliefs. The adjective form is polemical, which means relating to or involving strongly critical or disputatious writing or speech. For example, a polemical essay would be an essay that strongly criticizes or refutes a particular belief or opinion. Potent Potent The word potent is a verb that means to be a sign or warning that something, especially something momentous or calamitous, is likely to happen. For example, dark clouds on the horizon might potent an approaching storm. 
Similarly, certain economic indicators might portend a future recession. When something portends a future event, it suggests or indicates in advance that this event is going to happen. Poultice Poultice A poultice is a soft, moist mass of material, typically made from plant or food ingredients, that is spread on a cloth and placed on the skin to treat an ailment. The purpose of a poultice is to relieve pain or inflammation, draw out infection, or promote healing in the affected area. For example, a poultice made from crushed plantain leaves might be used to reduce the swelling of an insect bite, or a poultice made from bread and milk might be used to draw out an infection from a wound. Historically, poultices have been a common home remedy for various ailments, and while some are backed by traditional knowledge or anecdotal evidence, it's always a good idea to consult with a healthcare professional before using any home treatment. Preamble Preamble A preamble is an introductory statement or preface, especially at the beginning of a formal document, that explains its purpose. It sets the stage for the main part of the document and often provides context or underlying principles. One of the most famous preambles is the Preamble to the United States Constitution, which begins, We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. In this context, the preamble lays out the goals and guiding principles behind the creation of the Constitution.